What's up, everyone? Welcome to your weekly tech update, the show that explores the newest, coolest, and sometimes crazy side of tech available on the interwebs. Uh, we also cover entertainment news, and I try to bring you a little bit of joy at the end of each episode as well. I am your host, Ray McNeil. Coming up on the program today, the new Cyberpunk 2077 trailer goes full Grand Theft Auto. NASA's designed a new vibrating necklace to help you stop touching your face, and we'll wrap up the program with this week's Moment of Joy. All that and a whole lot more coming up on today's edition of your weekly tech update, next. A new trailer for the highly anticipated game Cyberpunk 2077 was released recently, and it continues to look, well, absolutely amazing. In this trailer, we get a closer look at the gameplay, which doesn't look entirely too dissimilar from Grand Theft Auto or Fallout New Vegas. There's a bit of an open world to it, tons of weapons at your disposal, and super fast cars and it all looks like a lot of fun. The game hails from CD Projekt and is an adaptation of a 1988 tabletop game. The story takes place in a dystopian night city, California, with six distinct regions. You play the role of the customizable Mercenary uh, 5, or it could just be V, who can reach prominence in these uh, three character classes by applying experience points to start upgrades. V has an arsenal of ranged weapons and options for melee combat. Oh, and did I mention Keanu Reeves is in it as well? He has a relatively small role, but you do catch a glimpse of him at the end of the original trailer. The game was originally set for release this past April, but was ultimately delayed until November 19th due to complications. We'll leave it at that. That date can't come soon enough, however. Most animal-inspired robots are designed to move quickly, but Georgia Tech's latest is just the opposite. Their newly developed Slothbot is built to study animals, plants, and the overall environment below them by moving as little as possible. It inches along overhead cables only when necessary, charging itself with solar panels to monitor factors like carbon dioxide levels and weather for as long as possible, possibly for years. It even crawls towards the sunlight to ensure that it stays charged. The 3D printed shell helps Slothbot blend in, at least in areas where sloths live, I suppose, while sheltering its equipment from the rain. The robot will start by watching over the Atlanta Botanical Garden for several months, hanging from a lone 100-foot cable. In the long run, however, Researchers hope to have the sloth bot covering wide areas with multiple cables. It could be vital for tracking endangered species and changes to their environment, such as orchid pollination by endangered frogs with uh, minimal intrusion by humans or, of course, having to crawl over obstacles like rocks. The bot could even be useful for precision agriculture, where it might spot bugs or diseases before human farmers do. Before autonomous robots completely replace humans in the workplace, we're going to see a hybrid approach where workers augmented with extra robotic limbs will work safer, easier, and faster. In the case of this robotic third arm that can smash through walls, these upgrades will potentially also be an effective way to keep others a safe distance away during the coronavirus pandemic. Created by researchers from the University D. Sherbrooke in Quebec, Canada, the robotic arm is strapped to the wearer's waist using a rather industrial looking belt. It weighs around eight to nine pounds, which is roughly the equivalent of a real human arm, but that's because the hydraulic systems that power it 
are housed in a separate box that connects to the arm through cables and hoses. Housing the power system remotely makes the arm much lighter, but the approach limits mobility, so don't expect the hardware to bring your supervillain fantasies to life, at least not anytime soon. There's another trade-off to the arm too, at least in its current form, it's not autonomous yet. It lacks the necessary sensors to analyze the world around it or the objects that it's supposed to interact with. Instead of the wearer controlling it, or the arm mirroring the wearer's motions, a second person controls it using a small replica of the arm, often called a Waldo. Requiring a second person to help complete jobs the extra robot arm is supposed to streamline is counterproductive, but eventually using tools like AI, it could operate all on its own or intelligently take cues from the wearer. What it lacks in mobility and autonomy, the robotic third arm makes up for with speed, agility, and strength. It's nimble enough to pick fruit off a tree or swing a badminton racket with enough accuracy to return a shuttlecock, and it's strong enough to lift at least 11 pounds. The end of the arm can swing at 3.4 meters per second. That's more than enough to smash through drywall or leave someone with a broken nose if they get too close. To ensure that never happens to the wearer, the robotic arm's movements are mechanically limited, but it's also designed with joints that can reduce the force exerted when they hit something as an extra safety precaution. We've already seen technologies like this implemented in places where repetitive work poses injury risks to workers, such as the ExoVest, an exoskeleton suit that Ford designed for assembly line staff. This isn't quite as refined yet, but it does have the potential to boost productivity without putting employees on an accelerated path to overwork or burnout.